Today, we've got Shopify wizard Ezra Firestone back on the show. He sold tens of millions of dollars on Shopify and now finally just got started on Amazon. In his first couple of months with just one product, he's already sold half of a million dollars on Amazon. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's a completely BS-free, unscripted, and unrehearsed organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the Amazon world. And we've got somebody back on the show today who, until a few months ago, was not an Amazon seller. All right? He, he, he stayed away for a long time. Ezra Firestone in the house. Ezra, how's it going, my man? I'm good, brother. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. So, uh, first of all, first things first, we got to have our priorities straight here. We still on to maybe go to Japan if they open up in a couple months for a Hakuho's last ever uh, tournament, potentially. 20 plus hour flight for me. But I mean, it's like, you, I mean, we have to witness greatness. This is Muhammad Ali in his prime. Um, yep. So, yeah, I think I'm in, man. I think I'm in. Ezra and I have bonded over our love of e-commerce and our love for sumo wrestling, guys. We have a lot of different unique personalities here in the Amazon world, and you you never know what what other things that people uh, like to do that you know you might like uh, until you start networking, guys. Uh, so make sure to do that. I'm trying to buy this Norin. This like uh, you know what a Norin is? It's like thing that hangs in the doorway with the slit in between the two parts. Of it. I'm looking at this like um, vintage sumo Norin for my door, um, but it's pretty expensive, and I'm like ah, I don't know, but but I'm, I think I'm gonna go for it. Just do it. Just do it. Yep. I, I, I love those two. I want to have one in uh, one of my hallways that's just like, there's no door at all. So like, I'm like, this seems awkward. So that's a, that's a perfect thing for it. Hey, there, there, there's an Amazon product uh, idea for you guys out there. Well, maybe, maybe don't do it sumo because you know, some people might not like sumo, but definitely Norin's for sure. I see there in the background there, you've got, you, you can almost have your own little sumo mat. Um, oh, right I, there. dude, I did sumo on the beach last week. I mean, I'm, you know, we are both former sumo competitors. I've been working my arm drag. Back to e-commerce now. Um, you know, you're you're obviously well known uh, for your Shopify prowess. You know, making millions and millions of dollars on uh, on Shopify. But let me just ask you, what prompted you to 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 say, you know what, it, it's time to go ahead and and expand to Amazon. Usually, people the opposite. They start on Amazon and then expand to Shopify and other places. You went the opposite way. What 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 triggered it? Um, so, you know, this, I, I think that you have a much more valuable brand if you can, um, sell from your own platform and I'm ultimately building and buying brands to sell them. Um, and so, you know, it's also a lot harder, right? Cause you got to run your own ads. You got to build your own technology stack. You got to do your own email marketing. It's, it's a lot harder to make a Shopify brand work than an Amazon brand work in my opinion. Um, so so yeah, so I built up this Shopify brand boom. You know, we were at 32 and a half million last year. And, um, you know, for many, many years, my supply chain couldn't handle any more volume than I was giving it through direct response. So it's like, why would I give any sales to Amazon when I can fill all the volume that my supply chain can handle with my own ads via my own store and keep all the customer data, you know? Um, and then... Uh, around about the end of last year, like I had really beefed up my supply chain. I, I got obviously beefed it up enough to do 32 million in sales. And uh, I thought, you know, I can actually handle um, additional volume here. But I was worried about uh, cannibalization of my direct to consumer platform. So basically, if I go onto Amazon, not only do I now lose money in terms of margin because I got to pay Amazon to ship it prime. Currently on my website, I charge people for shipping. Um, but some people will find my products via Facebook ads and go buy them on Amazon. So I'll actually undercut myself by offering product on Amazon. It's another reason. And then three, Amazon's all crazy volatile and negative review you and they do all this crazy stuff. And, you know, you have no control over the reviews. Um, and a lot of the reviews are fake attacks from competitors. And it's definitely something we've, we, we are currently under attack from a bunch of competitors, leaving fake bi biased reviews, trying to get us shut down. Because there's a bunch of parasite brands that are, op, you know, that, that, uh, that are sort of buying ads for our keywords and being like knockoff cheap versions of us. And when we came onto Amazon, we took all that away from them. And so we're getting like really viciously attacked. Uh, it sucks. And it's like one of the reasons why I don't like selling on Amazon is because of the nightmare that you have to deal with from people who can attack you and Amazon really not caring 
so much about it and really nothing you can do other than go through the traditional channels and try to get it back up. And so we've been shut down, suspended, you know, all this crazy stuff for stuff that's not, um, you know, you know, claims against us. It's super crazy because we're, we're huge, you know, we're a big brand and there's a lot of activity for people trying to sell under our name and sell knockoff products, which then makes us a giant target. So, uh, and Hey, and my suspicion of there will be cannibalization of our direct to consumer platform is true. There is, there are people who are now finding us in, in our Facebook ad process and going over and buying on Amazon to the tune of about 25% of them, about 25% of the people who would have bought on Facebook are now buying on Amazon, but the additional scale, we are getting people that never would have found us either. So when you factor in the additional volume of people who are who were not necessarily looking for us or seen our Facebook ads or who maybe were only looking for us on Amazon and then when we weren't there went and bought a competitor, it evens out and we're making more than we would if we weren't on Amazon. But we are dealing with a whole bunch of drama we wouldn't have to deal with. Um, and ultimately for me, for the value of the brand, proving that it can be successful in marketplaces and getting that additional expansion of revenue and profit makes sense because ultimately I'm going to sell it, right? So made sense to expand onto Amazon because it kind of, reach that point of maturity where it needed to go there. Um, but I'm still pro building my brands on Shopify. Uh, but I also understand that not everybody has that skill set. And whenever anyone asks me, when everyone says, Hey, as how should I start a brand today? I always say start on Amazon. If you don't know direct response marketing and advertising and sales funnels and video ads and email marketing and lifetime customer value marketing and stuff like that, start on Amazon and then expand on the Shopify. I still think that's the way to go. But for me, since I have been in this industry for 15 years, I do, I do the, um, you know, Shopify first model. Okay. You started, uh, later, you know, um, you talked about people cannibalizing, you know, your keywords and things like that. And, and I remember I, when you were first getting, you know, getting, uh, started on Amazon or before you even started on Amazon, I told you that I was like, you know, people are actually searching for your, your keyword of your brand is actually had some decent search one. We, even before you even started in January, I'm looking at it now, there were like almost 4,000 people a month who were searching for just this keyword, boom sticks by Cindy Joseph. Um, and so like, you know, those 4,000 people, you know, I'm not, uh, probably they didn't end up all 4,000 of them buying a competitor's product, but a good portion of it, you know, they couldn't find your product, but they did find other people who were maybe advertising against your, your keywords and were like, you know what, I'm going to buy this. And so now these people are, are entering this keyword and they see your product and you're getting their sales. I, I see an increase in the search volume. I mean, when you first launched in March, you must have done some kind of campaign with your existing customers because the search volume for Boom Sticks by Cindy Joseph went up to 12,000 uh, in March. Like, did you like tell your customers that you were on Amazon or? No, dude, we didn't. Huh. I think it's just wow, the that's fact just that organic we live. I think it just got around, you know? Like, yeah. I think the fact that we got on Amazon, people just started being like, oh, I can find Boom on Amazon now. And past customers started noticing us at the top of the beauty category. And I think it's just natural when you run a bunch of ads uh, sure. and you you know make a splash into a marketplace. Um, you know, I think we're doing like 15K a day on Amazon right now just for branded query stuff. Um, so, so I think it just sort of a snowball effect if now we're available there and then Amazon's pushing us and the whole thing. Yeah. Now, now I'm looking on Amazon right now. I only see, I mean, I, I see four SKUs, but they're all in one listing. It's, um, which one is it? Is it, it's the boomstick. It, have you only launched the boomstick on Amazon or did, did you launch other so, things yeah, that sold so, out? So our, we're not putting the other products on there deliberately. So boomstick is our hero tree, our product. It's the thing everybody comes to us for. And it's the thing everybody is searching for on there. If you want any of my other stuff, you got to come to my store. Amazon for me is not about being my biggest volume portal. It's about giving people who won't buy from me otherwise an opportunity to buy from me. And, uh, so, so, so people only buy on Amazon and getting the notoriety for my brand on that channel. Um, but I probably won't launch any other products on there. If you want my other stuff, you've got to come to my site. And I think that's, it's for me, it's more of a customer acquisition play because it, once you know about the boomsticks, you're going to start thinking about me. You might, you might see me on Facebook. You might learn about my other products and I want you to have to come to my site to buy those. So it's really not a, I'm not trying to build a giant Amazon brand. I'm just trying to capitalize. I'm trying to take away the opportunity for people parasiting my brand and capitalize on the people who will only buy on Amazon. Are you doing anything different as far as packaging or this is the exact same package, exact same UPC, everything's the same as what somebody uh, would get? On, on Amazon, Shopify. it's different UPC. 
And it's a different, it's in a box versus not on the website. So I changed the SKU and the UPC so that I could potentially change the price. Yeah. But I currently yes. have it at the same price, but I could. That, that, that's key. That, that's one thing you, you, that was smart because, you know, Amazon is, is actively checking other websites. And, and let's say you have a, a deal on Shopify where you're going to have a $5 off. And now it's instead of, you know, $30 is 25. Well, if your Amazon price is $30, guess what? You just lost the buy box and, and it's going to look like you're out of stock and it's a big hassle right there. So that, that's kind of a good, uh, a good method. Now I'm looking here. You're already the number one BSR in face highlighters and luminizers. I'm looking at these estimated. I mean, I, I obviously I don't have access to your sales, but I'm just looking at uh, helium tents, um, estimations here. It's, it's almost 200 grand a month you're doing just in these, in these SKUs. Um, that's pretty amazing. You know, that, 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 I mean, you, you have a seven figure product here, uh, on your very first, very do, first do one. Do you want so to know how accurate helium 10 is versus what I'm actually doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Like I show about 6,000 units amongst these four SKUs average six to 7,000 is the estimation here. So between April 26th and May 25th, I've sold 6,490 units. Oh, I love it. I love it. you run x-ray right now. It says 6,500 units. So that's actually scary. Good nah, that's crazy, dude. That's crazy. All right. Wow. Um, so 6,500 that, units. That is accurate, bro. I love it. I love it. Um, that's accurate, dude. So, I mean, th th this is just great. So guys d don't think that, you know, you're going to start from scratch and you're going to have a, uh, a quarter of a million dollar per month plus to $400,000 a month per month, uh, product. You know, the reason obviously of, of Ezra's success is because he was so established out there. And, and if your brand name without even selling one product on Amazon, if your brand name is getting thousands and thousands of searches on, on Amazon, of course, it's a different sandbox than, than the rest of us. But this just shows you the, the, the potential of, if you do get established off of Amazon and bring that brand recognition, you have got a leg up on all the other 95% of Amazon sellers who are just barely starting and nobody knows their, their brand at all, you know, um, uh, at, uh, at all. So you mentioned some, some roadblocks, you know, people attacking you and bad reviews. Um, what was the suspension? They said some crazy stuff and they had a whole bunch of people say it. And then Amazon shut us down. Um, they, um, keep doing one star reviews against us, like getting people, they're using these like review clubs to buy one, buy, buy our product and then give us one star reviews. They're just doing all kinds of dirty stuff, man. It's, it's, it's really bad. <laughs> yeah. So, so how, how did you get unsuspended then? We had to put all this proof to Amazon about all this kind of stuff we did with our products. And, um, we had to go through the traditional channels and, um, and then we also had the issue of like, we couldn't get our a plus listings and we couldn't, you know, we just had, we just had issue upon issue, uh, issue after issue with Amazon. Um, but Hey, you know, it's working, we're up, we're selling, but we are, we are being very heavily attacked and we're not manipulating our, our, you know, like everybody else I know is in these review, these rebate clubs where they, you know, they, they basically pay this service that then goes out and gets real customers to buy, to buy their product. And then they backdoor, give them a rebate via like Venmo and whatever, you know, because we're not doing that. And we have the bad, you know, the, the bad actors coming after us. It's like, it's hard to have a, you know, highly positive, um, review ratio. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, right. this, this is, I'm just looking at these numbers. This is just mind boggling, but, but guys, you know, I worked for a big company before too. And, um, and we, they were off of Amazon first and they did a, a, a similar to, to Ezra and, and they had something similar where they were getting bad reviews and things, but people didn't care. And, and that's the, that's kind of like a good, uh, a good, goal to have is have your brand recognition so strong. These people are, are, are seeing Ezra's ads in, in Google and in Facebook, and they're coming to Amazon with the intent to buy boom. Now they are not, these are the kind of customers that, you know, I, I'm looking at his, 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 um, listing here. It's only got only quote unquote, got four stars, but these are the kind of customers that are not dissuaded by that. If this was just some no name brand, I see three and a half or four stars. I'm, I'm going to go away from it, but these are people who are coming with specific buyer intent to buy this exact product. They don't care if it's four stars or not. They already made that purchase decision. So that's the power of of building your brand recognition off of Amazon so that once you do start on Amazon, you, you, you don't have to worry about bad reviews that much. Of course, you know, we all worry about it. Yeah, but, we uh, still got a bunch of customers who are leaving us positive reviews, so it's helpful. Yeah. But, um, you know, and I also think even if you have an Amazon brand building up, you know, I, I teach a course called Beyond FBA, which is like about how to scale 
an FBA brand off of Amazon. And the goal is only to get 10 to 20% of your sales off of Amazon. And the reason that's the goal is like embrace what you're good at. You're an Amazon business owner. You're good at Amazon marketing, but get enough traction off Amazon so that the value of the company goes up when you go to sell it. If you have 10% of your sales off Amazon, you've just gotten yourself an extra multiple or two in valuation, right? Because the whole point of a brand is not just to run it for cash flow, but it's to build an asset that you can one day sell. And if you have some level of Shopify uh, platform and sales, the value of that asset is way more than if you don't. I love it. I love it. Let, let, let's switch gears. You know, we've talked about Amazon. Or actually, one, one last question about about the Amazon thing. Um, did did I remember I connected you with this one department there in Amazon. Like, have they helped at all or pretty much everything you've done has just been on your own? Yeah, that, it, was, it was nice to connect with them and everything, but they, we, we didn't end up engaging with them because there wasn't really anything they could do for us. Like, like if you want to be premium beauty, you have to have every one of your SKUs on Amazon. We're not going to put all of our SKUs on Amazon. So that removed us from that. Um, any special advertising stuff wasn't that compelling and the priority support they were providing with us wasn't that helpful. So it was just like, ultimately didn't end up being a fit for us to pay them the, whatever it was, you know, um, to be a part of that program. It was nice to talk to them. It was good to connect with them. They did help us through some a plus content listing things, but ultimately, you know, we are not a good fit for Amazon's programs because Amazon really wants to embrace Amazon native brands that are really focused on scaling on Amazon. Yep. And that's not us, you know? Yep. Um, all right. So, um, yeah, I'm just curious. You're one of the first, uh, I've connected with that, but if, if anybody listening to the show, if you guys are a seven, eight figure seller off of Amazon, um, you know, let me know and, and uh, let's see, you know, maybe somebody can help you if you, if you are going to fully do your, your catalog on Amazon, I kind of makes sense from Amazon's point of view. I guess they only want to kind of help people that are really going to go all in with them, but Hey, that's not, that's not necessary in this game, but uh, l let's switch gears, go back to uh, Shopify. What happened on, um, you know, in the last year, obviously the, since we talked last, you know, there's a, this thing called the pandemic that, that happened. Uh, were sales, uh, you know, up, down, sideways for you? I mean, we had some issues with COVID where when it first happened, our supply chain shut down because our warehouse got COVID our supplier uh, place that makes our, our stuff got COVID and then our shipping center got COVID to people there. So we had some issues in um, March and April and we were back live uh, in May as well. We were back live by June, June through December was our best months ever. Um, so we had that nice COVID bump of more people buying online and that, that definitely helped us. And then year to date, we've also had the best year ever. You know, I think we're on pace for something like 45 million this year um, just on our website. Um, so COVID has been a really positive. So, so obviously COVID is not good and I'm not saying it was a good thing, but there is the just objective side of, you know, e-commerce grew and that helped e-commerce merchants. And so COVID had a positive effect on the e-commerce industry. And that just is a description of what happened, you know, and, and I feel for all the families and everybody who was really affected by it. And I've definitely done some donating and all that stuff. And also, I'm happy that more people are doing e-commerce now and buying e-commerce because that's good for me. You know what I mean? I think it's good. It's good for all, all the people I know and all the entrepreneurs I know. And I think it makes the people like us who have, have these skill sets like even more valuable. Yeah. It's hard to find the, um, you know, silver lining of anything bad, but this is definitely one of them. Um, you know, like, Hey, th this was a bad event that happened, but if you're looking for a silver lining, well, if you're in the e-commerce, uh, you know, unless you were in the, the travel industry, you know, for neck pillows or something like that, that people just weren't using, you know, you, you probably had a bump uh, in your sales. Now, over the last year or so, since we talked last, what has evolved, uh, if anything, on the Shopify side or on the advertising side, like how you send people through funnels or how you advertise to people, email marketing, uh, are you doing text marketing? Like what has changed for you in the last year and a half um, as far as uh, the off Amazon traffic? I mean, SMS is definitely a bigger, um, you know, is a growing platform. So it's a, it's like another way to communicate with subscribers. You have ads, you have emails and you have SMS. So pixeled audiences, those are people who, you know, viewed your stuff, um, or visited your website. You got people who have, whose email address you have, and then you got people whose SMS address you have. And some people are doing Facebook messenger through many chat, you know, but those are really the main ways you can communicate with a prospect and SMS is on the rise. We use it a lot for cart abandonment, post-purchase, you know, all kinds of stuff. And I've got an app for Shopify that I just rolled out. That's all about SMS. It's called connect K I N N E K T. Um, it's sort of a competitor slash similar to other SMS app, apps out there, but with my sort of flavor on it. 
Um, I think that the name of the game is um, the same thing I've always been doing, you know, video ads to sales funnels to get people's email address and offer them my product. And you just got to keep doing that better. The brands that tell the best stories and make the best promises win in the marketplace, not the brands that have the best product. The promise wins, not the product. The product's job is to live up to the promise that you made. So he or she or they who make the best promise are the ones who are most successful. So I've just been focused on that. You know, how do I make better promises? And then how do I have my products live up to those promises I'm making? But my strategy and structure has not changed at all. Doing the same thing I was doing 18 months ago. Let's talk a little bit more about um, SMS uh, marketing. I had, oh, what's his name? He's one of your friends too. Ari Baga? Yes, yes, Ari. I had him on the show like probably like, probably like eight months ago almost uh, because it was something that we had never, especially Amazon sellers, you know, don't think about, you know, um, but I was like, I wanted to introduce this concept of SMS marketing out there. Um, can you talk a little bit uh, more about how you're utilizing um, it? Well, so there, there's um, there's a couple ways to use it, right? There's pre-purchase. Someone comes to your website, you pop something up that says, hey, get 10% off by text messaging us. They tap that pop up. It opens up their iMessage. They send you a text message. You auto reply with it. So it's like a pre-purchase incentive to buy. Okay. To get so you get them subscribed to your SMS list by incentivizing them with a coupon. They tap a pop up by tapping that pop up. It opens up their iMessage. They send you the text message. You auto reply with the discount and the link. So one click to iMessage, which is a pretty cool technology. Um, so that's pre-purchase. Usually the way that you use it is to get people subscribed via an incentive. Of course, there's cart abandonment SMS messages. There's post purchase purchase SMS messages. There's SMS messages based on, hey, the order just got delivered. Go check. Uh, so there's all these behaviorally automated one. There's dynamic upsell, cross-sell. Hey, you bought this, but not this. Try this other thing. And then there's broadcasting. So sending broadcast to groups of people. SMS is just like email. Everything you do on email, you do with SMS. It's just a different communication medium, but the same idea. Communicate with the subscriber based on where they are in the sales process. Okay, cool. Now, going back to uh, Zipify, you know, which is what a lot of people also, you know, know you for, um, you know, which integrates with, with, with Shopify. There is something I was looking at your website um, the other day, and I just pulled it up now again. And, and I, um, what does opt-in light boxes mean? That's why I wanted to ask you. Oh, well, a light box is just like a, it's a pop-up. So it's like you click a button and it pops open what's, what's called a light box, which is essentially a pop over over. It's like, you ever seen a pop up for an email on a screen? That's what yeah. it is. It's also known okay. as a light box. So when, when would somebody use something like that for a shop? Like, like, are there certain triggers like, Hey, if they, if they're, if they're just on the page and they're not doing anything for X amount of time, let, let's pop this yeah, up or how, how does that there's work? There's a lot of like, there's a welcome pop up, right? Someone comes to the site and you pop something up that says, Hey, join our list and get 10% off. There's exit intent. Someone goes to leave. You pop something up that says, Hey, you know, don't leave stay here. Or like, you know, you send someone to your website and it's like, go buy this on Amazon. They click the button and it pops up and says, before you do give us your email address and we'll send you a coupon for 5% off. They give you your email address. Then you redirect them to Amazon with a coupon. You know, um, I have this thing called booster page that I built, which op, which uses Amazon one-time use coupon codes and it delivers them uniquely. So it's like, Hey, you know, um, go to our, you, do you want this product on Amazon for, for, 10% off. Great. Give us your email address here and we'll give you a one-time use code to use on Amazon. So we use small discounts, 10%, 5%, 15% max so that Amazon doesn't penalize it. But, um, but basically that technology is built into Zipify where you can integrate Amazon one-time use codes and a sales funnel where you get someone's first name, last name, email address, phone number in exchange for that. And then on the thank you page, you link over to your Amazon with that dynamic one-time use code. It also ties into your email where you can email them the, the individual, you know, one-time use coupon code for Amazon and instructions how to use it. Um, and that works really well for us as well. Cool. Um, now you, you guys, you know, have a lot of people that, that you train on, on different Shopify things. And, and I'm just wondering, you know, a lot of them, I'm, I'm sure maybe are opposite as what you did, you know, as, as far as starting on Shopify, then going to Amazon, you've probably got a lot of Amazon sellers who are now looking to you like, Hey, how, how do I start on Shopify for, for, for those people who are just getting started on Shopify, who are Amazon sellers, do you notice them? Like, are they using their Amazon FBA to initially fulfill their uh, Shopify orders? Absolutely. Makes total okay. sense. Use the fulfillment network you already have. No reason not to. 
Okay. Now, now I'm not, I'm not, I've never done it before. I'm, I'm about to start with our project X uh, case study. And I might actually be needing some help from your team, uh, getting our Shopify set up, but well, does Shopify have something I mean, that integrates? Let me, you, with... um, let me give you beyond FBA mentorship. It literally takes you a through Z tells you everything that you need to do to go from Look it FBA. Up. I want that. Yeah. On the Shopify. Okay. S- send me an email to Ashley and say, Hey, Ezra said I could have beyond FBA mentorship literally walks you through step awesome. by step every single thing to do. You can then tell everyone else how to do it. All right. I love it. I love it. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to make that a, a blog study right there and maybe a, a little video series. Um, but do I, do I need extra software or like Shopify literally can integrate with the merchant channel? Shopify with Zipify pages for, to build your pages out and Shopify connects directly to FBA one click. Awesome. So it's, it's really, it, guys, it's a no brainer, guys. If you're not doing Shopify. Well, it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, wait till your brand gets a 10 grand a month on Amazon. Like get some traction, focus on your Amazon ads, optimize your listing, like get going. Okay. Then build out your site. Like, but, but, you know, do one thing at a time, get yourself up and running, you know, um, get yourself some sales, get yourself some velocity, get yourself some reviews, get yourself some ads, you know, like, you know, use helium 10, understand the market. Like, I wouldn't recommend going to Shopify straight away. I'd recommend doing Amazon. Not from 40. day one on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Last couple minutes here of this episode. Um, maybe you can just hit us with some some of your tips. You know, we, we, we have this thing on the show we call the, the TST 30 second tips. So maybe you just give us some rapid fire like strategies based on, you know, customer interaction. It could be about Shopify. It could be about anything. You only have so much time on this planet. What are you doing? Are you having fun? Are you enjoying yourself? Are you showing up with a positive attitude? Are you taking care of your physical body, your mental body, your emotional body? Are you, are you investing in your relationships and your hobbies outside of work? Are you just grinding and miserable? It's like you get to choose how you show up in the world and the world could use one more happy person. So do what it takes to be happy, have fun, you know, bring positive attitude, be enthusiastic and make good stuff. Stuff that truly serves the world, stuff that truly serves your community. Keep making your products better and then be profitable and do it in that order. Have a good time, make good things, and then worry about being profitable. And if you've done that, you've won the game we call business. I don't care if you're at $50,000 a year or $50 million a year. That's the game. Have fun, make good stuff, be profitable. Um, And, you know, don't burn yourself out by working 12 hours a day and sort of have your business be the reason that your personal life sucks, which is what a lot of entrepreneurs do. Make sure you got hobbies, make sure you got a social life, make sure you're investing in your relationships because that's only make you more effective in business. Now, um, speaking of, you know, doing things in your personal life, I, I follow you on Instagram. I notice you do some, some pretty out there things like jumping in cold, ice, cold, freezing lakes. Uh, is that, is that a new thing for you or you've been doing that for a while? Well, I got this river. Um, I live on, I live in upstate New York about a piece of land. It's got a river on it and, uh, you know, cold plunging has been getting popular with the whole Wim Hof thing and whatever, but I was always getting in the river. I like it. I get in the river year round, cold, warm. I like it. feels good. I like being, well, all right. I'm, I'm going to, when I visit you out there, we'll, we'll do some sumo and then, and then to cool down, we'll, we'll jump in that river. Yeah. There. You check out Wim Hof, man. He talks all about it. He's got the breathing exercises and the cold plunge and all this kind of data about how it's good for you and stuff. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, you've mentioned, you know, we've talked about different things like, you know, Zipify and, and then your FBA course and things. Can can you let people know now, give some links here on how people can uh, can find those on the interwebs? Uh, well, I mean, follow me on Instagram at Ezra Firestone. Um, and I post all my stuff on there. And then you can just go to Zipify.com, Z-I-P-I-F-Y.com. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, are we going to be able to see you at a- any conferences this year um, now that things are opening Dude, up? Are again? there any conferences this year? What There's like an Amazon one in July in Vegas, the Prosper Show. be awesome if you can come out there. But um, that's the only one that I know of. There, there's like White Label Expo and there's a couple um, Retail X that used to be called. I forgot what it was called before. That's in Chicago. But um, as far as Amazon only conferences, it's just Prosper. I'm out of the loop. Yeah, send me a link to the ones you're going to. I speak right. at a couple, but the ones I was speaking at all are not planned yet. So I don't know. Okay, cool. All right. Well, Ezra, thank you so much. And we'll definitely be, uh, hopefully Japan will open up so that we can make that trip together and uh, watch the goat in person. It's super fun, man. Thanks so much. Talk soon. All right. Thanks. We'll see you later.